Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to be checking out Sea Lion. Sea Lion is a cross-platform C and C++ IDE from JetBrains. Now that name may sound familiar to you. Uh, we just covered their fleet, a recent released uh, lightweight or lighter weight IDE that's meant to compete with the likes of Visual Studio Code. Well Sea Lion is more about competing with the actual full fat Visual Studio or more specifically Visual C++. The big difference with Sea Lion though is that it is cross-platform, so Windows, Mac and Linux versions. Um, it's very familiar to all of their other IDEs, so if you're coming from, say, a WebStorm or an IntelliJ background, you will be immediately comfortable with the tools. And on top of that, instead of using a proprietary system, their entire build um, platform or project setup uh, is using CMake. CMake is a very important part of CLion, and I hate writing make files, and CLion probably makes it about as manageable as it's possible to get. So CLion is available from JetBrains. Uh, we'll get back to some of the details in a second. It is commercial software, but there is a 30-day trial available, and if you work in, say, education or open source, you can probably get a free version. We'll get back to that after we do a little bit of hands-on. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is C Lion. Obviously, this is aimed at making C and C++ programs, but you're also getting much more into the world of Rust lately. I'll show you a Rust project just in a minute. But first, let's head on back here. We'll make a C++ project. Here, you got anywhere from C++ 98 up to CPP 23. Um, We'll go ahead here and make CPP20B, just because I've already made the A. We'll go ahead, create that project, and we will do it in the same platform. Now, one of the things I've always liked about all of their uh, their tools uh, is they have some really nice presentation modes and Zen modes for actually editing. So here you are uh, in the typical editing environment. If you've used any of their other IDEs, you're getting all the strengths and weaknesses. So this is built on the JVM. So if you have performance issues with their other tools, you will have performance issues with this one. Also, if you're comfortable with them and you know the hotkey, you will know them here. By the way, if you are coming from more like a, v, a Vi or a Vim background, uh, you can get plugins to give you the traditional keyboard key sets that you are used to and so on. All, there's a huge plugin support for this guy. But back to some of those tools I was talking about earlier on. So for example, I am doing a presentation to you right now. I can zoom in and out the font so you can actually see what I'm going with. One of the things I love as like a YouTuber is I can come in here and they have things like presentation mode. And then boom, this kind of hides everything away. Uh, so if I'm just doing a coding demonstration, I can just show you that part. By the way, you're also getting obviously the full uh, code completion experience. Uh, so uh, all of the modern suggestions you're expecting are available there. I do love, oh, you're also noticing as we're looking at the top here, so you're getting real time uh, linting or problems as they go on. So if I just do, if I do an error, like so, uh, it will turn into an error. You get real-time error details up here. You get these little light bulbs that actually give you suggestions on how to go ahead and fix said problem. Uh, and what I do find is the real-world error handling in this is so much better than what you get from Visual Studio. Visual Studio just spits out so much information uh, that it's generally quite useless. I did not mean to do that. So you can exit out of presentation mode here. Now, also for just straight-out coding, you've also got things like Zen mode, which kind of gives you just a, a little bit less just even less going on. So if you just literally want to focus on your code, come into Zen mode and you can literally just come in, focus on your code and handle it that way. It's a lot like presentation mode, a little bit different, uh, but I do like these various different editing modes. Now, one of the big things about um, this in general, again, is that CMake based project over here. So you see here it in action, there's some nice things going on. In fact, in the next version, and this is how complicated CMake is, the next version is actually getting a CMake debugger. So in terms of fixing your CMake projects, uh, it's actually going to have tools to walk you through that. But this one even already has stuff like see here, add executable, any one of these things or the set command, I can highlight over and get full documentation of how to go ahead and write these projects. Same thing here is you get um, code completion here for your project management as well. So if you struggle with make files like I do, you're going to really appreciate the tools built into C Lion. On top of that, if you're just working with your project, so for example here, I'm gonna go in and add a new class. So go ahead and add our class in and we'll call this my classy class. Uh, we can have it created as a CPP or header file, or we can have it created um, basically uh, as a header only if we wish. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the compound. And then boom, it just created it for us, which is very nice, but you'll also notice it uh, automatically added it in 
to your CMake files. So it's like, again, it's dealing with the projects like what you would expect from say Visual Studio. It's just using CMake to do so. So you don't have to deal with that crap. And then if I go ahead and I do a refactor, which again, there's a ton of refactoring tools and functionality in here. So if I come here, refactor, and I wanna call this uh, my, say, let's be a more realistic, low class class, I can go ahead, refactor that all out. Yep. Rename everything. And you'll see it does it all up there and it's switching it in the projects as well, which is also very, very nice. Now, another thing you're going to notice, you've actually got a typical tool. So here we are inside of uh, code. So I can go here, we can refactor and change out a variable, so on, we can extract methods out. Um, so let me just come in here and say, uh, public colon int meaning of life equals 42. By the way, you do get uh, spell checking, which can also be turned off. You're getting also real time. There's also some nice details here as well. Like for example, it's actually telling you how much size that actually took up, which is quite nice. Um, and then if you want, you could, I could go ahead here. Uh, we got context actions to do various different uh, things that would make sense to do. Or we could, again, I could um, refactor this one out and do a um, setter methods for it uh, and so on. Very, very nice in that regard. Um, it's just got all the typical C++ style refactoring tools that you would expect uh, from a tool like this. And again, you're seeing like linting, like it's got my name here and it's trying to spell check my name, which is very irritating. But again, you can go ahead and just turn these linters off if you so wish. So if you find those particular things annoying, uh, you can literally just get rid of that particular, um, that warning or that linting tool there. Uh, it's a decent IDE environment for sure. We're gonna come back over here to go ahead and run something. Again, you've got your full breakpoints. You can right click a breakpoint, make it a conditional breakpoint, easy enough. Uh, you can debug into your code and so on. All the tools you would typically expect are here. On top of that, you've got uh, a number of other tools here. You've got full version control built in here as well. Um, then you've got the variety of refactoring tools, which again, I like. Uh, you do have uh, code inspectors in Navix. So if I wanna go ahead, I can run a cleanup on my code, analyze it. So if there's anything, th th my project was very minimal, so I didn't actually find anything to deal with, uh, but you do have this will go through and clean up or inspect any problems in your code, like so. Uh, so you got the various different uh, warnings here. So for example, I have unused structs and I could go ahead and let's just, Boom, you could save, delete it or whatever. So it gives you suggestions on all of your stuff. So you have the code inspectors that go through and do the common linting tasks for you, which is very nice. You've also got code navigation for running through and finding and locating things. It's got some of the best refactoring tools available. Now you notice all the way throughout here, we've also got a variety of different little tools available here. So we got uh, one specific to the CMake builds over here. Um, it's generally pretty comprehensive in terms of the features and functionality in here. Uh, you do have a decent number of settings available as well. One of the big things I do in every one of these videos is blind you guys. So for example, blindness warning, uh, you do have a number of themes available. So let's go to the Mac OS Lite theme. So if you prefer that, that is available there as well. I was using the um, Monokai, let's go to Darkula for example. If you want to get more themes, there are a variety available as downloads, uh, which is quite nice. In general, General, uh, the plugins, if we get rid of just the theme aspect, we just look at all the plugins available. Uh, there is a ton of extensibility uh, for this guy. Once again, if you're interested, um, if you want to have Vim or Vi or or so on, there, there are um, plugins available to give you that kind of editing environment. There's basically a plugin available for just about everything. Now on the topic of Rust, let's go ahead and show you that very quickly. So let's go here, project. Uh, go down here, we can create a Rust one. If you have not already installed the Rust plugin, it'll just say install Rust, available right there. So I'm gonna use 1664, uh, untitled Rust Proj Bro, and go ahead and create it. Now with the Rust integration, if you're using this guy as a Rust um, IDE, what you're gonna find is there is full blown um, support in here for cargo tools. So here is a typical hello world. Let's say I want to do a Bevy project. I can come in here to cargo and say, okay, so my dependencies include Bevy. So I'm getting auto completion on that. And then I'll go here and it's also figuring out what versions are available. I pick a version of Bevy. I am good to go. You're going to notice over here, we also have the option so we can change it or sync it on the fly as we were going. You're also getting real time uh, responses from that. So we just added uh, that Bevy dependency in right there. So save up our TOML file, go over here and let's do 
paste. So this is a bevy sample scene from bevy and we'll go ahead and run that. So now what this is going to do is run cargo, grab all of the various different dependencies that our Rust project has to work with and get them going. Now I haven't noticed there are a couple of glitchinesses. Uh, for example, this is going to run just fine. At least it's a demo. So now it's probably not going, but this code in theory should run just fine and display in just a second. But you'll also notice it's showing me five uh, problems. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, uh, none of them are problems. They're false. They're false flags on this guy right here. I don't know if that's a known problem or me just being kind of an idiot when it comes to the world of Rust development. I'm not entirely certain, to be honest. But there is our project up and running. Now, again, the nice thing here is the entire thing is once again uh, fully. Um, uh, fully debuggable, so I can set a breakpoint anywhere I wish. We can go ahead and debug it like this. And hopefully that is actually a line of code that runs. There you see, we, we hit our breakpoint. Uh, we have real-time inspections going on right here that we can drill down into. Obviously, you have this for C and C++ as well. So you do get a nice comprehensive uh, debugging experience as well. Uh, your typical breakpoints, again, your breakpoints can be conditional. Uh, and once you've learned this, again, one of the big things about using uh, just an IntelliJ or a JetBrains project in general is you use this and then you say you want to have a web editing environment. You can head on over to WebStorm and get the same thing. Now, there is also one of the problems, in my humble opinion, with C Lion. The biggest problem to me uh, is that it doesn't support SLN or CS uh, or uh, VC projects. So you can only use make based projects. But the kicker is they do have another product out there uh, that is called uh, Refactor C or ReSharper C. Um, one of those two, anyways. And it does have solution or Visual Studio project support. So I don't know why uh, they don't implement that into C line because you've got some engines that ultimately generate. Um, Visual C++ projects as part of the, the thing, or, or at least solution files, and then you open those up and edit accordingly. Now, there are other engines out there. For example, you can use this guy with Unreal Engine, and it supports um, CMake-based projects. So you can use this guy directly with your Unreal Engine project, but they kind of get these overlaps between their projects, between um, ReSharper and uh, CLion, and for example, uh, Project Rider, where they're all kind of like tripping over each other. So there's some features that would make sense to be merged across all of them that just simply aren't. So one of my frustrations, I do wish there was SLN or Visual C++ project file support, but it's a pretty minor quibble. And you'll also find that uh, the newer versions of Visual Studio support CMake. Uh, it's not quite as seamless as with CLion, but you should be able to have a project in one that works with the other as long as you use uh, the CMake build systems. In terms of features, again, uh, there's decent enough stuff here. You've got uh, full things for navigation and search through your projects. You've got Smart Editor analyzes what you're doing, Smart Completions, the IntelliSense. The IntelliSense actually works very well, I find, in this particular case. Um, Code generation refactoring tools are probably amongst the best that are out there. Uh, you got code analysis. You can run it on the fly as well. Fully customizable editor. Uh, again, you have all the debugging tools that you need built in. You've got remote and collaboration tools as well. You got tools here if you are doing embedded development for things like ARM uh, devices. Uh, dynamic analysis. Again, CMake support is probably one of the biggest things that they focus on, especially if you look at like uh, what's coming in the next release. You're going to see it's almost entirely C-based. Uh, so again, you got unit sweet so CMake based the changes. Um, you got built-in terminals, you got a Vim mode, you got the source control, you have uh, code documentation integration, and you can work with multiple languages all out of this one tool, which is definitely nice. So once again, here I'll go you as a hint. So here, the next version coming up, you're going to see CMake, <laughs> CMake, 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 CMake. So obviously CMake is a very important part of C Lion. But if you find yourself working with CMake based projects and you find it frustrating, C Lion may be the perfect tool for you because I find I find make based projects incredibly frustrating. But again, C Lion, it, it kind of creates the documents for you. And then it has the tools for when you need to modify things yourself that make it a more usable experience. So uh, C Lion is definitely one of the ones worth checking out if you're using C, C++ or possibly Rust. Uh, it's a decent IDE all around. Uh, in terms of pricing, uh, so you're looking at kind of different terms. So if you are an organization, so in other words, uh, someone else is paying for it, you're looking at uh, $229 a year, and then it gets cheaper each year thereafter, which is always pretty nice. Um, and then, by the way, if your subscription ends, I do believe you can keep using it. You just won't get updates anymore. Uh, as an individual, uh, you're looking at $100 and then $79 and then $59, or you can get all of their products for like an integrated pack 
pr um, price. And then on top of that, there are a number of other systems here. So you get it completely free uh, if you can verify that you're a student or an educator or a classroom assistant and then open source projects. So if you're running an open source project, uh, you got a deal there. If you are a startup, you can get 50% off. If you're nonprofit, you can get discounts, uh, so on and so on. So even if you are a former student, you can get 25% off. So basically what I'm saying here is don't pay full price. Come here, check out the special offers. There's a pretty good chance that you can get Sea Lion either for free or uh, for a discount. So that is uh, one of the key things about it. So, you know, people don't like paying for tools. We've kind of become so accustomed uh, to uh, being free. But I think if you're working in a professional environment and something makes you more efficient, it's kind of a no brainer uh, to, to pay for something. So, you know, again, if you're, say, billing out at 50 to to $100 an hour and this saves you uh, 10 minutes time, it pays for itself in like a day or two. Like that, that's kind of the reality of commercial tools. But if you're in one of these other groups, well, they've probably got you covered as well. So if you are a student, a recent student, you're working on open source or whatever, there's a chance that you can get this either for free or for a discount. So if you are looking for a C++ C or possibly Rust IDE, C Lion could definitely be worth checking out. Again, if you do not like IntelliJ, you do not like their other tools, you will not like C Lion. Though keep in mind, Fleet is the exception. Fleet is not built on the same core. Fleet actually uses uh, a completely different new uh, core, so it's not built on the IntelliJ ID. Uh, but at the same time, it is still a JVM-based project. So uh, if you have problems with JVM-based software, uh, that's not going to go away with CLine. But if not, uh, you will find it, it's a very nice tool it's got all of the features and functionality you probably would expect to be there out of the box. It's got some great coding experiences, nice refactoring tools, nice uh, setup and environment to work with. It's decently customizable. And then on top of that, you do have a, a good solid extensibility. Uh, the plugins are a core aspect of all of these projects. So there are a ton of projects out there for ex um, plugins out there, sorry, for extending what C Lion is capable of. Now, if you're looking at this from a Rust development perspective, do keep in mind the Rust plugin for C Lion is the same one from IntelliJ. So IntelliJ is an equally viable opportunity for you for an IDE. Um, it, it's a little bit more cluttered in some ways, I find. Uh, and I also do believe that the free version would work for you. So if you are from the Rust side of things and Rust is your primary concern, you can also check out IntelliJ. It is ultimately the same plugin. Uh, it's just, I think C-Line integrated it a little bit better, at least from my experience, but you can get the, the same ultimate experience from uh, the IntelliJ. Because IntelliJ in some ways is that what all of these different versions, WebStorm, PHP, Storm, so on, are all sort of spun off from. So a lot of the, the super set of functionality is generally always available in IntelliJ as well. Uh, but you find that a lot of the spin-off ones are a little bit more focused on what they work with. Uh, and that can generally be a strength and sometimes it's a negative. But anyways, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the C Lion IDE. Again, if you're looking for cross-platform C++ and you want to use make files, it is pretty much a no-brainer as long as you can handle the JVM-based approach and you like the way they do things. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.